Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today I have got a fun DIY craft video for you all. Now let's get crafting. If you haven't heard, I love color. This video has this color theme that I'm focusing on for these projects today. For this project, we're going to be taking two of these wood fence posts and I'm going to be cutting them in half. Now I made sure I accounted for the very top part where it's arched. I went ahead and also cut that part off because I just wanted these to be flat pieces on both ends. I love these because these are still affordable pieces at your home improvement store. These have not gone up in price like most of the wood has. So I picked up two of these to make this sign. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring them together all four to create a really adorable farm barn door wreath hanger. You can also use this for so many other things to put hooks to hang jackets on all kinds of fun, fun projects for this. So you can see that I use some painter sticks. I use wood glue and hot glue and then I stapled them into place on the back side. And then on the front side, this is how we're going to get that barn door look. I went ahead and created a middle piece that had angle cuts and then the two long pieces that go across the width of the board. Now to give it that farmhouse look, I'm going to nail in three of the nail heads here on this side where the middle meets up to the ends and then two on the other sides. Now I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to just do a really rough job painting this. I'm not trying to get every single thing covered to give it that farmhouse look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a wipey and wipe back off the paint off of the nail heads, leaving it looking a little bit rough with a little bit of paint on the nails where it looks like it's been outside and weathered for a long time. Then I did a little bit of light distressing and added a metal handle to the very top. I'll link these handles down below. I picked them up on Amazon. I love these and I'm actually going to be using them on another project soon here on my channel. And then very last I drilled a, another hole for my screw to hang up a wreath that I'm going to be putting on this which is happening from project number two. I am taking all of these different florals, a mixture of past spring florals with some of the newest florals to really cut down on the price and get that fall look. Now this color theme is so fun. I wanted it to have that fall color where things are starting to become a little bit lighter from the cold weather outside. It's got that frosty look where it still is also bringing in those beautiful oranges and very soft, soft, soft pinks. Now I have a couple different ways I like to do my wreaths. First on this wreath in particular, I'm using a zip tie and I'm bringing together three of this peonies from the Dollar Tree and I'm clustering them in five clusters and then I'm coming back in and I'm also going to zip tie on bundles of these peach carnations as well as this newer sprig from the Dollar Tree that has these beautiful peachy and white leaves. It's got that frosted look with the little pumpkins. Then I'm going to start to fill in these pink roses because again this is that muted tone that you start to see towards the end of fall where everything is really starting to just get cold and icy outside. I thought these all came together so beautifully. Now I made sure to still add in some really bright, pretty orange. And then this boxwood as well from the Dollar Tree. I was so impressed that the Dollar Tree had all of these new floral picks this year. Another thing I added in were these white berries. These are all year long. You can find these at the Dollar Tree. And then some of this fall grass. I thought that this pop of green and yellow in here was perfect for this wreath and it really got that look I was going for. And then the last thing I added in were some of these, I don't think they're black eyed Susans, but they're little sunflowers that are white and it has the really dark, dark brown center of it. I love that little pop in there. Now this completes the look. What do you think? Mm -hmm. 
This project is going to be a thrift find. I picked up this tiny little jar vase. I loved it. It was so adorable. I picked it up for a dollar because the thrift store had their half off day at the Goodwill and I just simply took it outside and gave it a beautiful coat of this taupey grayish tan color. Then once it was all dry, I did three coats of that. I took some of these rub-ons from the Dollar Tree and then I cut out the letters welcome home, rubbed them on and now it's ready to be displayed. For this DIY project, we are going to be taking these super popular crates from the Dollar Tree, some of these larger tongue depressor sticks, and two of these handles that I picked up from Amazon. Now we're going to bring these six crates together with some hot glue and some wood glue. And I'm going to use these little clamp holders that you can also get from the Dollar Tree to really make sure everything is locking into place. And I'm just gluing them the long ways first and then I'm gonna bring them together and glue them together. This is going to create the cutest organizer and I wanted to make something like this because I always have little treats and activities for my kids at certain points of the year and I wanted to be able to organize those treats. Plus, you can use this however you wanna organize it. You can put it inside of a linen closet or on a table. I, there are just so many fun places to be able to organize these things. Now on the ends of these crates it has these holes and I wanted to cover those up so this is where the tongue depressor sticks are coming in. I'm cutting them down to the length of the side of the box and then there is the last one. You can't all the way get three of these tongue depressor sticks on so I had to cut one down a little bit thinner in size but the neat thing about it is that the lines match up almost identical to the sides of these crates. So now I'm taking some white paint and I'm just going to do a really rough paint finish on it. You can paint it whatever color you want or do a full finish of paint. And now I'm going to take my drill and I'm just going to drill these handles onto the sides of the box. This is going to allow you to be able to pick it up whenever you want. You could even put school supplies in this. This would just be the cutest thing to have out on a table and it really does get that high-end farmhouse look. And last, I'm gonna add a dot of hot glue on the inside where the screws accidentally popped through because they are just a little bit too long so the hot glue will address that in anybody being scratched in the future. And at this point, you can organize it however you want, but I'm gonna be putting candy in mind since we're going into this fun candy season. If you did not know, I am over on Instagram underneath the handle name Heidi Sample. I am always sharing all my sneak peeks on my stories and in my gallery. If you have not found me over there, I will link my account down below so you can get there really easy. Come on by and say hi to me. I love using food cans because it is the easiest trash to treasure flip. I think that they are so affordable and you can do so many cool things with them to help organize things around your house and to make something beautiful on a budget. Now I took my three cans outside, spray painted them white, and now I'm going to cover them with different sizes of this fabric that I found that matches my color theme for today. One of the cans is going to have a nice thick piece of fabric from the top to the bottom leaving the white rim poking out. And then the other one is going to have a much smaller band of fabric around it, leaving more white exposed. And then the tallest one, we're going to jazz it up a little bit by putting on this white star button and some twine as well. I simply took it and just wrapped it around and glued it into place. Nothing too crazy here. 
And then the, for the little star, I just added some twine into the holes of the button and glued it into place. Now at this point, this extra special jar is going to get a floral arrangement in it using those really beautiful frosted leaves from the Dollar Tree. And at this point, it is so fun because you can put whatever you want inside of them. This project is so super simple. Don't blink because you might miss it. I printed out these words as a fall bucket list checklist and I'm just going to simply take an old canvas frame, the wood part of the canvas frames. I took off the fabric and now I'm going to cut down that printable to the size that I need and simply glue it inside. I love the color of the wood. This is the color of the wood tone I'm using a lot this year in my home for my fall decor and it worked perfectly. So then just glue it right on the back and you've got yourself an adorable project for just $1. For this project, we are going to be using this umbrella stand holder. Now friends, I love going to thrift stores and finding things like this because it obviously had been donated twice. There were two different stickers on this particular item. One that had a saver sticker and then one that had a Goodwill sticker. I was cracking up because I think people saw the potential in it and then they just kept donating it because they just never maybe had the time to work on it. But I want you to see how quickly I'm going to update this thing. All it needed was a fresh coat of white paint at the very base and the rim top. Look at how much it transformed it with just some white paint. Now I loved the wicker wood around the basket itself and did not want to touch that. So now I'm coming in and just lightly distressing where you have that detail on the rim. And then I'm going to add this little tag. You know I love these from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna pop it off and glue that right on into place so that I can customize it if I want to with some chalk. At this point, it's all set and I can use it for our upcoming fall and winter season to put our umbrellas in in our house and I love how it turned out. I can see us using this for years and years to come. This particular project, I sold tons of online stores selling these for so much. Now I will say with all of these individual corn pieces from the Dollar Tree that I picked up, all together it cost $12 to create this, but I know that there are real corn packets that you can get out there that are much cheaper. I happen to have had these on hand because I've been collecting them from the DT for some time. So these particular candle holders are so expensive and all it is is just gluing on pieces of corn onto an actual glassed item and then locking them into place by taking some raffia and wrapping it around. Again, I could probably get away with making this much cheaper if I had used real dried out pieces of corn, but this is what I had on hand and I wanted you all to see that you can get that high end look for a fraction of the cost and really enjoy your home by customizing with beautiful fall pieces. I 
I was online the other day and I saw this vase that cost over a hundred dollars. Now I will say that it was a 12 inch size vase, but I'm going to recreate it for basically $3. I'm going to be taking this glass vase and some of this crackle paint and I'm going to create the look that I saw online that was so expensive. First, I spray painted my glass jar from the Dollar Tree a creamy ivory. Then I used a thick coat of the crackle paint medium and let that dry really well. And then I'm going to come back in with this pretty clay gray color and I'm going to just put a very nice coat. Now, tip for this part, make sure you work quick with the crackle paint because as soon as you put it on, it starts activating that top layer. And the real trick is making sure you have a thick coat of that crackle paint medium on first and it's dried and then you put on a thick coat of your top paint. Now, I sped up the process so you can see that it crackled and did its job. I love using this product. It's such a fun thing to be able to see it activate and the paint starts to crack and chip. And you can see down on the bottom of this jar that I didn't put a thick enough layer there. It's more of a brushed dry stroke. And that's what I'm talking about. You wanna make sure you've got a nice thick coat on it so it doesn't have brush strokes and it has more of a crackled effect. Now I went on the bottom of the jar and I just added on some distressing and now I'm going to do a macrame around the jar. Macrame vases can cost so much money and this is the reason why I wanted to share this project. I'm just taking a twine long enough that's going to wrap around the base and now I'm just looping on five strands. And I'm not gonna go over the full macrame process just because there's so many tutorial videos out there and I've even covered it here on my channel before but I've got five strands on one long strand and then I'm going to tie that around the base of my jar, add a little dot of hot glue underneath each one to keep it in place to make sure it doesn't slide as I'm macrameing and knotting it up to the top. And then I'm simply just going to take a rope at the very bottom and I'm going to spiral it around so that it gives it a nice base for it to be sitting on so it looks like my inspiration that I found online and I'm making it for so much less and then once that's all glued into place I can start knotting my twine that I have coming up the side of the jar. Now I will say at this point I was getting a little bit nervous about this project but always see your projects through. Don't ever give up on them because as I got to the end of my project I started to really fall in love with it because traditionally these colors are not what I do in my home, but the texture when I'm done turns out so beautiful. I was so excited how it turned out. Now you can see at this point I'm doing two macrame knots going up. I've got one at the middle point and one more towards the top point. And then I'm kind of doing a not full macrame look at the top because you're not even going to see it. I'm just pulling those top twine ropes where I did the last knot and I'm bringing them over into the edge of the vase and just gluing them into place. Super simple and you still get the look and without all the fuss of trying to tie those top knots. Then I'm going to add in some foam and some beautiful white peonies from the DT and I'm just simply going to fluff those and zhuzh those until I get them to a place that I'm really happy with them. You can't have a fall video without a pumpkin in it. So I wanted to share how I'm going to update the look of these DT pumpkins that you can get for a dollar each. And I'm simply going to just pop out those top little pumpkin stems because we're not gonna be using those. And then I'm going to put them on a shish kebab stick and this is gonna allow me to paint them without putting my fingers all over it and taking forever to paint it. I like to do this tip where I just like to poke a shish kebab stick in it and it really lets me get that painted desire look without my fingerprints being all over it. Now I'm using a very 
taupey white color on this because I wanted it to have a concrete cement look. And then I'm coming back in with more of a brown, very soft tan brown, and I'm coming into the inner bumps of that pumpkin. Now the trick to get that really pretty concrete look is you go inside of that crack of the bump and then you come back in with the lighter color on your finger and you massage it all into place which will create that shading and that tenting. Once you're all done doing that, go ahead and take a stick from outside and you're going to just cut a hole into the pumpkin that's the size that you will need. Anytime I ever work with foam, you will see that I get that off my desk immediately because it goes everywhere every single time. It's such a messy thing to work with. And then I'm just going to hot glue my stick right down inside, add a little bit of this Spanish moss from the DT, and then on my smaller pumpkin, I decided it needed a leaf. So I'm going to put on this beautiful olive green maple leaf. And really, this is just going to complete that look. I'm only going to put on one because I love the other one just being with the stick and the moss. Friends, I hope you felt inspired by today's video. There were some new ideas, some thrift flips, and some look for less projects. I had so much fun creating this look and I wanted you all to see there are so many options when it comes to crafting. Don't ever limit yourself to just one thing. Don't be afraid to try trash to treasures and just really having fun with your supplies that you have on hand to make something beautiful. Now I'm going to recommend a couple of videos right here that are similar to this video if you enjoyed it and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And until the next episode, bye friends.